Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. So on today's episode, we're going to be setting up CARP to provide our servers with the failover capability. And um, on OpenBSD in this case is what we're on. So let's first log in and uh, real quick set some of this up. So we're on the server that we want to be the master server. All right, is, is uh, where we're on right now. And what we have is we've set up a web server and it's at 192.168.10.2 and it's serving us up a web page. It doesn't matter though if this is a DNS server or a mail server, um, this will work the same. It's, it's called layer 3 redundancy is what CARP provides and it lets these two machines or more in this case um, share an IP address. So in other words, regardless of what happens physically with the server or the network or power, this IP address will always be available, so so will the resources. But to set this up, we're going to go into Etsy hostname and then create a file carp10. So this file you know, under Etsy called hostname.carp10. And my reasoning for calling it 10 is just because I'm going to make the group 10. Uh, that's the only reason, but you can call it what you want. Now we're going to say init for IPv4. This is our virtual IP address or VIP. It's going to be 10.4, and our net mask is going to be a slash 24-bit uh, subnet mask. And then we want to say carp dev. This is the device the packets will be sent out of for carp. We're going to say EM0. It could be a VLAN interface, or, or in if you're more familiar, a sub interface if you come from other equipment. Um, that's what it is. Now, VHID, we want to specify a group number. This group number has to match, but it's how the CARP speakers know they're in the same instance. So that's going to be 10, and we're also going to put a password on here, all right? Now that has to match on both sides, but you do got to make sure it matches. Now another thing specific to OpenBSD's implementation is you always have to make sure you put the broadcast address in, otherwise it's just going to fail. Um, when you start this up, but to summarize, we have a device that's going to send the packets, EM0 in this case. We have a group number, which is 10, and optionally we have a password. Alright, so we're going to save this, and we're going to do, let's look at our interfaces. We only have EM0 right now, but if we do SH at CNET start, or simply reboot, we should be able to now see that we have CARP10. Right now it was in the backup state, and now it's moved to the master state because it knows in group 10 of this instance of CARP, it is the best uh, node in this group, essentially. So that sets up the redundancy on this side of, of the virtual IP, 192.168.10.4. Now, real quick, we're going to go over to that IP, and I want to make sure 192.168.10.2 is operating, and also 192.168.10.4. want to make sure both those are operating, so we'll see you in a second. Alright, so now in the web browser here, we're going to go to 192.168.10.2, and it, the contents of this web server just simply says master in this case, so I know which one. But if we go to 10.4, we're still going to see that. The reason is, is because in the CARP, that 10.3 is still the master. And remember that the the 10.3 address that's separate, that's the management address. So if you want to check content on the machine or test it or log in to administer the server, you want to go to that address. You don't want to use the virtual IP because it may be on the wrong server at the time you're accessing it. All right? So you want to make sure of that as well, and, and remember those are the management, and the virtual IP is different than the management addresses of them. So let's run over to the backup server now, and we're going to configure that real quick, and then we're going to come back and see the failover work. All right, now we're on our backup server. We're going to go ahead and log in. And what we're going to do here is... Um, just like before, we have 192.168.10.3. Remember, that's the management address um, once we set this up. 
what we want to do is go into Etsy host name and then make a file carp10 and in the same way we're gonna specify a virtual IP with the subnet mask make sure to specify the broadcast and then carp dev is where those packets will be sent out of that's EM0 in my case VHID you want to make sure it matches um, the other the master um, server and then we want to specify that password all right and because we want this one to stay the backup um, and be less preferred we're gonna say advertised SKU of 100 and that's going to allow this one to be less preferred as opposed to the main one and you know that may be because the switch it's connected to is one gig and and the main one is connected to a 10 gig switch um, you know anything along those lines might make that server more um, preferred for some reason and that's how we can control it in the in carp at least once we save this we can just bring it up like before but just make sure that uh, everything is working so we have EM0 and that's working and then we have carp 10 alright and that is up and it's in the backup state and that's what we want to see unless the other one uh, fails for any reason now speaking of the other one we're in the master state as far as carp goes but what we want to make sure of is if we go into ctl.conf we want to set a variable called net init carp preempt and we want to set it to one what this does is it allows the machine to take back over when it comes back online after a failure so otherwise the more preferred one would never be selected so going back to if it's a one gig link and you're keeping your backup one on because you didn't put preempt on you may start to have congestion in the network for the request going to the server where you wouldn't if the preferred one was set to take back over but um, let's set that again though net init carp preempt equals one and that way we don't have to reboot but this one again is the master um, machine and the backup is over here now we're gonna go over now to the browser again and have both of them up so you can see the failover happen so I'll see you in a second alright so now back on the web browser right now if we go to 10.4 the master server responds and send us, sends us the page but if we bring up both of our servers here and we can see right now on carp 10 on the master that we are in the master state but if I do an if config like for maintenance carp 10 down and let it switch over to the other one what's gonna happen is we're gonna get the backup page now in production the contents of the servers are gonna be identical um, regardless of the type of service you're providing to the network so these wouldn't be separate the idea is that you don't know the website went down in this case it would be identical pages but um, if we bring if we come over here we can see there um, carp 10 that now we're in the master state but if we bring that carp interface back up the more preferred and he can preempt and we go to 10.4 now we have the master coming back and from there if we go carp 10 now we are back in the backup state on the first one so that is how you set up carp to provide redundancy for network servers um, on OpenBSD. so as always though i do hope you found this video helpful and informative and i would like to thank you for viewing um, and it's been tyler with t-tech